today's date is February 26, 2020. The time now is approximately 1205 hours. This is in reference to Orange County case number 20-017904. I'm currently located at Tealwood Park Apartments, 4704 Lucier, Lucier. Yeah. for Winter Park, Florida, 32792. I am here with my partner, Detective Scott Long, with the Orange County Sheriff's Office, and can you state your name? Melissa yeah. May Sexton. You are the property manager of this complex, correct? Yes. Okay. And... <clears throat> um, we had Cameron here asking about the tenants, um, Sarah Boone and George Torres. Mm -hmm. And they have lived here, um, you gave us a date of February 9th, 2018? Correct. Okay. Um, you had told us that <clears throat> Sarah would confine in you about her and George's relationship. Can you tell us further what she would tell you? Yes. Um, Sarah... When shortly after she moved in um, with George, she came to the office um, to talk to me. We noticed bruises and stuff on her, and um, she asked me if she could talk to me privately and asked how I could, how she would be able to get George off of the lease. Is there any way to do that? Uh, which prompted, you know, deeper conversation. Uh, she proceeded to let me know and she was showing me a lot of bruises and marks. Uh, there were handprints. Uh, scratches. She even at one point had to go to the hospital through multiple conversations that we had had. It steadily progressed. You know, um, she had a very large gash at one point in her shin. She had to go to the hospital and get that taken care of. I'm not exactly sure what it was from, um, but I think it had to do when they got into a fight outside <laughs> and something got broke. I think it was one of their wine glasses or something. But, um, you know, she came to me at one point asking, you know, what do I do? Like, how can I get rid of him? You know, I don't, I've never dealt with this type of situation. Um, I just counsel her as she continued to come to me and explain to her that, you know, she had to make a decision if she was going to stay with him or not be with him. If she, you know, was going to try to work things out, they needed to seek out therapy, help, something. <laughs> um, it wasn't too long after that last conversation that I found out the police had came. And George was arrested. Uh, I don't remember about how long it was in between time, but there was another incident after that where they both got arrested, all for domestic. Um, the complaints are had throughout their whole term, roughly about 20 to 30 noise complaints, fighting, arguing, uh, banging on doors, uh, loud music. It was just always something pertaining to their lifestyle. I do know that I have seen both of them intoxicated as early as 9 o'clock in the morning, and I mean staggering, falling down, intoxicated, <laughs> both of them. Um, and there was a noise complaint that I had received about some fighting one day that was going on, and Sarah was actually wandering around the property very drunk, um, barefoot, not properly dressed, <laughs> I'll say it like that, um, uh, sitting on the side of her building over by the retention pond. Um, when I was told about that is when I approached Sarah, sat down, talked to her. I even had also separately went and talked to George and told them that once they had sobered up, I needed to have a meeting with them. Um, the following business day, because this was a Friday, I do remember that, um, I went to see them Monday roughly about 12 o'clock. They were sober. <laughs> they apparently had had some epiphany, you know, that they were going to straighten themselves up and start acting right. And they did very good for, well, basically until now. I haven't gotten any complaints since May of the past year, mm -hmm. you know. But up until that point, the complaints were consistent, monthly, always. Um, did, would you ever speak with George by himself? Like, did he ever confide in you about their relationship? The one time um, where, like I was just saying, that um, when I talked to her, she wanted me, she asked me to go talk to him. Um, but she's like, please, but put the fear of God in him. Fear of God in him. <laughs> I'm a very stern property manager. You know, I don't tolerate a whole lot of crap. <laughs> right. And she knew that. And um, she seemed scared of him at the time. So I said, sure, no problem. Just stay here. I uh, will go talk to him. I went over, sat down, talked to George. I talked to him for about 30 minutes all together. And, you know... George had explained to me that she was actually the aggressive one. And the reason she ended up with Marks is 
uh, in my, I'll say my perception of what he was trying to is it, explain is that she's very hands-on, in the face, you know, dramatized in, in talking and explaining or, or fussing or whatever they might have been doing. Right. And I, I believe that because Jean, my assistant, doesn't even like to deal with her or the way her like to play <laughs> because she was always drunk and she's very hands-on. Uh, there was one day, as a matter of fact, it was that same day that I talked to George by himself. She kept grabbing me by the arms to the point that I told her, I said, touch me one more time, we're going to have a problem. You know, I'm right. either going to contact the police or whatever we need to do. But she can't keep grabbing on me. I had asked her several times to quit touching me. <laughs> and because of that, she would do the same thing to Jean, and Jean didn't like it. Right. So, um, you know, he, that's what he was explaining to me, is she was always the touchy one, the aggressive one, you know, not that she was hitting him, but she would be like in his face or she might, you know, push him or, you know, little things like that. Mm -hmm. And she would block him from coming out of the room or whatnot and he would take her and move her. Right. You know what I mean? And just, that's the way he had explained it to me. Right. She has told me, even literally to Monday, I have been told by her several occasions that he has drugged her around by the hair of her head. Mm -hmm. um, I've been, you know, told about by neighbors um, I'm sorry I don't have it anymore but at one point a tenant actually sent us a video clip via text of them two fighting and beating on each other out in the backyard um, there was another complaint incident about a ladder being propped up to the wall that George was using to climb over the wall <laughs> to try to get back into his apartment sneaking in and out there was another night, sorry, I forgot to tell you about this too. Uh, I got a call for one of my vacants in building 24, uh, 4724, which is not the building. <laughs> there was a tent set up on my vacant back porch. <laughs> and it's apparently where George was sleeping for a couple of nights because she had him out of the house. I have another tenant here who may or may not speak to you, I'm not sure. Um, for that reason, I don't want to give you her name just yet without sure. talking to her, but. Yeah. George and her fighting that the, a different evening had actually wandered into her home. He was so drunk and had no idea where he was. And when she came home, luckily her kids were not there because she's a single mother with three kids. George was actually upstairs in her house hollering, looking for Sarah, thinking he was in his apartment. <laughs> so we've had some incidences with them in that aspect, but nothing has ever been... Um, so bad that, you know, I didn't feel that we could resolve the problem. And like I said, we haven't had any issues since May of last year. No complaints, no nothing until this. So we thought, hey, they're doing great. You know, maybe they fixed the problems. <laughs> I mean... Has she come to you since May of any, of any issues? Oh, no. Okay. Not one time. But then, again, you did... It basically, they were told you're going to be evicted if there are. Yes. So it was kind of like uh, tighten that, up or get out. Yeah. It was okay. put up or shut up. I was over it. Yeah. If it continued, I was putting them out. Right. So. Did you ever see any marks on George? No. Not one. <laughs> not one. <laughs> like George was a little bit darker skin. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. Sure would you see would. George as often as you saw Sarah? It sounds no. like Sarah can be a lot more. Yes. Than, yeah. us, we would always see Sarah as far as the only time I ever really saw George is. The time when we actually got George to sign off the lease. Right. Um, and he came to me and said, you know, I can't get back in the house. <laughs> She's got all my personal paperwork. He goes, would you please have a conversation with her so that I can get my personal paperwork back from her? He goes, but do you have a bolt cutter, a set of bolt cutters for my bicycle that's out back? And I said, what's it chained to, you know? And he said, it's actually chained to your AC unit. I said, yeah, no problem. I'll cut the lock. I'll cut the lock for anything attached to my AC unit. It's not supposed to be attached to that. Right. So I went out back and actually cut the lock on both of the bike locks because Sarah would not answer the door for me because she knew George was there. Okay. Um, once George was gone, she had actually, because Sarah had my cell phone number, um, being that I had already went through and just got out of a very abusive relationship, Sarah knew that because, you know, I confided in her and explained that um, she did feel a lot more comfortable in coming to me. So she, I told her if she ever needed someone, you know, or it was an emergency, she could reach out to me and I would do my what I could to help her. You know, I felt bad for her. But after a while, when she just kept taking him back and taking him back, I just told her, I said, you know, you're just going to have to call the authorities. You're on your own. <laughs> it's obvious you don't want it to stop. You know, he's not doing anything to get help according to you. And you just keep dealing with it, I mean, you know, there comes a point where it's just stupidity.
you know. But that's the run-ins and instances that I've had with him. I've never seen a mark on George, and he's never told me that she's hit her at all. Okay. But she has told me in front of him that he has hit her and things that he's done, and he was not denying it. He never denied it. <laughs> so George and her both expressed me on many occasions that they knew they needed help. But I'm guessing due to their financial situation, not having any work, probably why they didn't do much. Right. Yeah. When you saw them together, who looked to be like kind of more dominant? I mean, did one seem to be more dominant over the other? George. George was very confident. Um, you know, he wasn't arrogant or anything. He, he, for the most part, stayed to himself. Like I said, there are a couple people here that he knew, <laughs> you know, from, I would say, another life. <laughs> from Philadelphia, and, um, you know, George was the one I always seen driving the vehicle, George was the one I always seen playing with the child, um, you know, never saw Sarah outside playing with her kid, ever. Um, as a matter of fact, most of the time, Lucas, you would find him riding around the property on his bike, unattended, no parents outside, no nothing, um, because I had actually had a conversation with Sarah about that, <laughs> and I said, you know, the, the kid was a great kid, don't get me wrong, he never did anything to get in trouble, but it was more my concern for his well-being. You know, when he's all the way riding over here and around some of these corners with the dumpsters, these people don't see nobody. And they sure ain't going to see no kid on the body. So I had a conversation with her about that. And we haven't had any really problems. I thought I can say I've only seen Lucas on his bike away from her like that twice. She actually had secluded him to stay in front of the building, you know, which was fine. I just didn't want him on the way to get <laughs> But yeah, you didn't see Sarah out at all. The only time I ever saw her, especially after the incident that took place with Emmett and his ex-girlfriend, um, it was more like a confrontation that took place in the office. She made an accusation on Emmett saying that he was trying to forcefully, like, I don't want to say rape, but he was trying to push himself on her. On Sarah? Um, on Sarah. Some, so a, she made that claim. Some tenant? A different yeah, tenant. another tenant that knew George from Philly. Um, and they confronted the two of them. Um, you know, I will say Sarah hold her gro- hold, held her ground when the girl confronted her and asked her and said, you know, don't lie to my face. And Sarah said, yeah, he did. You know, so I was surprised because she knew that girl was <laughs> but <laughs> and she's larger than me. So... You know, I was like, oh my gosh, okay, well, maybe there is some truth to that. But it ended up, you know, just fizzling out. It was no big deal. After that situation took place, you really didn't see Sarah too much. She was pretty intimidated. Um, those two folks are actually a pretty large family that I have living here on site that actually took up four units at that time. So the whole fam family lived here. <laughs> you know, it's a little intimidating. <laughs> so after that, we really didn't see a whole lot of her. But before that, they would hang out periodically. Sometimes. The other two families? No. They just knew each other from the back couples. in the day. Oh, yeah. the couples did? Uh, the kids did. The kids did. Yes, yeah. that's what initially prompted it, and then that accusation was made yeah. during that same time. Okay. So, and when it comes to the kids on my property, I stay very involved with them. Yeah. We have some issues with our bus routes and all kinds of stuff, and uh, we had some kid vandalism being done, broken glass bottles. They were pulling glass bottles out of the trash, breaking them, thought it was fun. Um, and one kid told on another, and the parents got involved. It became a little bit of an issue, so I had to get in the middle to squash it, you know. I didn't want anybody fighting on the property or kids getting hurt for that matter. But that's it. Is there anything else that you think is important for us to know about Sarah and George that we haven't discussed? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, no, I don't, nothing really, they would, her nickname's Drunk with the Bear. I mean, you know, literally. <laughs> we know they drank from sunup to sundown. Would she ever, I know she confided in you a lot, would she ever admit that she was an alcoholic to you? Yeah. She would? Yes. Okay. I wish I still had my text messages. I <laughs> sent it to me on text many occasions. I know we drink too much, and blah, blah, blah. You know, she told me that George, one time, had it enrolled in AA and was getting help. Now, brother, that was the truth. I have no idea. Um, a lot of stuff like that I just take with a grain of salt. Right. 
you know, I think she was more concerned about the image that was being put in my head for them, and I think she was just trying right, to paint a prettier to. picture. Because right. I will say, <laughs> it was like a week later, she was gone. <laughs> and when we go, you know, inspecting the property and walking around different projects, we do a lot of uh, pressure washing throughout the year. We do that a couple of times. You know, I ride around the back sides of the buildings, checking everything out. We've got a property drainage system back there. You always knew, because you'd ride back there and you'd hear, ah, 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 9, 10 o'clock in the morning there, drunk, falling down, cutting up. <laughs> My God, I can't imagine being drunk like that all the time. Jeez. Okay. Can you raise your hand for me? Yes. I yeah, must swear everything we've talked about has been true and accurate to the best of your knowledge. Yes. Since our recording, 12 to 20 hours.